Hey everyone, today we're going to be going over the material UI component typography and how to use it with React. This is going to be really good for beginners. Typography is one of the most basic components you can possibly use, but for the experts out there, we're also going to be going over some of the more advanced use cases and some of the cooler things you can do with it. As you can see from the Topography API, they don't give too much details on how to use it and all the cool things it can do, but we'll cover all of that. Also, if you enjoyed this video and found value in it, please consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment below with what you'd like to learn next. It really helps the channel out. We're still a pretty small channel, but I want to get a lot of content out to a lot more people. So um, just by doing one of those things, it'll really help with the YouTube algorithm as well. So thanks, and I really appreciate it. Let's jump straight into it. So we can see here, um, our typography, pretty much as our documentation says, comes with a couple of different standards types of text. We have our H1 to H6 headers, just like in regular HTML. We have our subtitles, our bodies, and then we have button text, which is pretty much just all capitalized body text and a bit bolded. Caption text, which is the smallest variant on this list, and overline text, which as you can see, the letter spacing is a bit more. Um, the height is probably around, I would say, body 2, and it's all uppercased as well. Let's go ahead and look at some of the props that you can pass into your typography element. So the first one is a line. This is pretty self-explanatory. When you pass in a line, you can give it any one of these values. The default is inherent, and when I pass in a line right, it pretty much just moves my text to the very right of the screen. Children, pretty much anything you pass in as a child will be displayed in the typography. You can nest a couple of nodes in there. For example, if you're using React INTL, which is a bit more advanced, you can pass in a formatted message inside your typography. Um, instead of passing in plain text. If you are looking at classes, that means you're trying to override styles. We will go over that in a bit. Let's look at color. So when I, for example, comment out the custom styles I've added here, and I uncomment color equals secondary, you'll see that it changes the color to this pink. Now you might be asking, where is it getting this pink from? When it comes to Material UI, everything comes from this sort of default theme that you have an option to override. I have another video on how to override theme, and we'll touch upon it in just a bit, but just know that all of these colors, whether it be primary, secondary, text primary, text secondary, or error, are pretty much all set as default values currently. And if you wanted to see those default values, you can go to the default theme page on Material UI. And for example, if I open primary, you would see this is the color. Um, this color is our primary. And if we open secondary, this is the color that's currently being displayed. So if I were to inspect element, um, it would most certainly be F50057 under the actual hex color for this value. And as we can see, uh, there it is. So that is the color prop. The component prop, we will touch upon this in just a second. It's a bit more complicated as well. Display, pretty straightforward, whether you want your display to be block or inline. Your gutter bottom, so if I were to uncomment uh, this gutter bottom, it is by default set to true, but if you include it, it will be, or sorry, it is by default false, and if you include it, it will be set to true. If I were to go ahead and inspect this, you would see here, uh, once this uh, loads. You will see here that this it adds it applies the material UI typography gutter bottom class, and we can see here that the margin bottom added is 0.3 em. And if I were to obviously take it away uh, or remove this, it would remove that padding. Um, so no wrap is another interesting prop. Pretty much when you pass this in, instead of having the text wrap around, so for example, if I were to copy and paste this over and over and over and over and over again, we would see here that the text actually wraps around our div. If we pass in the no wrap prop, what will happen is it will stop at the end of your div and actually truncate it by adding ellipses at the end of it. You can't actually highlight these ellipses, which has always been sort of weird, I found, but that is pretty much what the no wrap prop will end up doing. V uh, paragraph, very similar to gutter bottom. If it is true, it will just add some bottom margin to your text. And now we get to the cool stuff, which is variants. So for example, right now, let's go back to just hello world. Our default variant is just body one, which maps pretty much to the same as a body um, element in uh, a paragraph element in uh, standard HTML. If I were to change this variant and I would set it to H1, well, it would show the standard H1 variant of HTML. But notice that there are some differences. Number one, the text style is different, as in uh, the font 
and the font weight and sort of the sizing is a bit different. If we were to go into our default theme, we could see here that there is a typography object. And within that typography object, we have some standards, um, some standard styling. So for example, our font family is equal to Roboto, Helvetica, our Arial, and Sans Serif. And if we were to go specifically into H1, you can see here there are specific stylings that we are applying. And if I were to actually inspect this H1, you can see here all of it is getting applied here. So for example, font size, this uh, MUI typography H1 style is applying it over here. If I were to take out the font size and the font family, um, all of it would start to resemble pretty much just the standard h1 component in HTML but uh, these styles are what's overriding and later in this video we're going to show you how to uh, use um, theme to overwrite some of these values and now finally we have this thing called variant mapping you might be thinking well, what is variant mapping well essentially what it does is it allows you it's sort of the same way component works where component allows you to choose the default DOM element that your component gets rendered on top of variant mapping allows you to do that for every single variant within your typography so if we were to inspect element and look at our hello world right now we can see that it's being rendered in h1 tags however if we added a variant mapping object and said something like h1 i want it to get rendered in like for example a span um, we can see here that all of a sudden this changes the span. We can set that to pretty much everything. No, it looks the same because we're still applying the variant stylings to it, but it just changes the component that the actual element gets rendered inside of. And as we scroll to the bottom of the page, we can see here we have all the CSS variables, or all the CSS names you can actually override. And if you're not familiar with CSS overriding when it comes to Matilda UI, I have another video on make styles which goes over it pretty well, but if you wanted to do that, we would pretty much use our make styles hook we would set up uh, choose which one we want to overwrite so let's say for example gutter bottom and what we're gonna do is we'll create our own gutter bottom so we can go over here make gutter bottom and let's set the margin bottom equal to something like 0 0.6 em I think by default it's 0 0.35 em um, so I haven't actually applied the style yet but just so we can see what's happening if we let gutter bottom over here uh, we apply gutter bottom through the props. We can see it applies a 0 0.35 EM margin to the bottom. Now, one way we could do it is pretty much just uh, add our class on top of gutter bottom. And that will pretty much, as we can see here, we have our make styles gutter bottom being applied on top of it. So it overwrites it. But the more material UI way of doing it, especially when it's a sort of named class, and um, a lot of the times in other components, you'll have to do it this way, is by adding the classes prop that we looked at before and choosing exactly which rule name we want to override. So gutter bottom and setting it equal to our classes dot gutter bottom. And as you'll see, it's also been added. Now, the last thing and probably one of the most important things I want to cover is how to apply custom themes and edit the default theme so that you can make your typography fit on brand for your uh, actual company or client or whatever you're building it for. You want everything to be nice and consistent. And by the way, just another reminder, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing, leaving a comment or hitting the like button. It really helps the channel out. So what we're going to do is I've pretty much set up a component that just uses a very basic type so the simple hello world in variant h1 and our app.js we've created our own theme using the create MUI theme and we've passed in a theme provider again I have a video on how to do this so if you're not familiar with themes too much you can learn there but this is what it looks like and I've set in our palette if you remember before if I were to for example comment this out over here and I were to say uh, type of every color um, equals primary the default primary is sort of this faded blue color. Now, in my palette, I can change the primary equal to this purple that gets exported from Material UI. The reason I'm using purple from Material UI is because this style comes with a bunch of different um, hues for the color in a bunch of different weights. If I were to just specify purple, then I would have to go ahead and specify things like um, main is equal to like purple again. Um, and uh, you would have to set all the different hues for the colors, but importing the color straight from Material UI does that for you. And you can see now our typography, because our color is primary and our theme, in our theme our primary is purple, it actually switches that over to purple. Um, and you can see the same thing if I were to uncomment this secondary equals green and uh, set the color here to secondary, we would have the same thing. And the cool, oh, looks like I forgot a comment, a comma. 
so you can see here the color change as well now the cool thing about typography is you can also set so much more as we saw before so for example let's go into the typography and let's say the h1 object to have a font size of let's say 1 em so we're going to make it really small and you can see here all our h1s no matter how much we were to put um, as long as the variant is h1 we have overwritten the style for h1 as you can see here in the default theme the font size is six rems and we've set it to one em um, and you can do this for the default font fonts in your application as well so if i were to put font font family and let's say i made it equal to um, let's say i don't know something like arial and add a comma here we would see here that the font is now arial instead of the default roboto that materialui um, likes to actually use and if we were to uncommon it it would fall back to the actual default uh, material UI um, stylings and theme so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope everyone has a good day